Hi everyone, this is Kayla Bellamy. I'm the bassoon professor at the University of Northern Iowa. I'm trying a little something new with some of these videos today. Um, we've had a lot of questions in our reed making class here with the undergraduates about uh, the first scrape that you do on bassoon reeds right after they're open from the blank stage. So I thought I'd just make a little live video here and take you through my first scrape on one of these brand new blanks. So I've got a couple blanks here that um, I've already had clipped to my first kind of performance measurement, which is 27 millimeters from the shoulder. That's where I start these. Um, sometimes depending on the weather and things like that, they end up being a little bit shorter than that. But you can see this, this blank has already been clipped open. It's got a fairly decently balanced tip, which I'm pretty happy about. That's the first thing that I, that I check just to see if there's any kind of imperfections, sorry, in the cane or in my, my initial process with profiling, but I've had some pretty decent luck so far this season, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the numbers on this read, all that means is when I made this blank, so it's actually a pretty old blank. I made this in November of last year, so I pulled it out of my stash, and we're ready to see if it's ready for probably November of this year. So I take a look at the, the tip and make sure that these one, two, three, four quadrants are all pretty much balanced in terms of um, how the primary and secondary curves relate. And then what I'm going to do is see if I can get a crow out of it initially. With the profiler measurements that I have set up, usually I can get a greedy crow right away. Um, but I'll go ahead and take my pliers and take the tip opening to something that looks like I'd want to play on it. My go-to description is the, the width of a dime. So about a millimeter or two in between the blades. Just something that you're comfortable with from playing. If it's if the reed's too open, then you're not going to get a crow, and that doesn't tell you anything about the thickness of the cane or anything. And if it's too close, and you'll kind of get that puny, high-pitched sound, which can really kind of lie to you about what the cane itself is doing. So I want to make sure that looks like a reed that I'd want to play on. And that initial crow is pretty high. It's got a little bit of a low rattle in it, but that's um, about what I expect from that first round. So what I'm going to do is put that right on the mandrel, and I double check right away after it's been soaked that once that goes on, it goes to a marking that I've made on my mandrel for where my vocal fits, and double check and make sure that there's no there are no leaks around the back. I can kind of get a pop, or if you push a lot of air pressure through the reed as it's stuck on the mandrel, you can hear if there are any leaks. Little bit of hissing right at the bottom, and I bet I can see where it is. There's just a little bit of a break around one of these seams. I've been finding lately that the older that these reeds are, the more there tends to be just a little bit of uh, imperfection in the back circle right around the butt of the reed when it's soaked up for the first time. So usually that, that goes away and I knock on wood and it's gone right away. So my tip opening is still good. I'll take my plaque. I use a clear contrabassoon plaque um, because I feel like it, it shows the light a little bit better when I hold up to a lamp. I do a lot of visual assessment. Uh, that's what that's the reason for the clear, and then the reason for the contrabassoon is so I have a plaque that's wider than the the width of the blade, and I can see the rails really clearly. So the the primary taper of this reed is in place from the profile of the back is thicker than the front, but that secondary taper from the center down to the sides through the channels and rails is really what I concern myself with in the first scrape. So what I'm going to do here is take my knife and do an initial pass on all four of these quadrants from the back channels and you'll see me blend up through the tip and that's just to make sure that the spine exists all the way from the back to the front and that I really start to get the focus of the, the thinnest part of the reed being this front front corner where the wing is. So I'll start right in the back, almost no downward pressure, just kind of get the get the cane started and at this point I can tell that this is like pretty dense cane just by how it's coming off. It's a little bit feathery and my knife doesn't want to catch on to it so I'm actually of happy about that. Go through and do a couple passes, back all the way at the collar, up to the front, and you'll see my, my stroke is getting wider as I go toward the tip of the reed and starts to rotate a little bit so by the time I get to the end, it'll freeze so you can see where that angle is. It's close to 45 degrees kind of going off the front thumbnail portion of the reed. And I do that just because I, I find that it's much easier to control a nice cane surface at that point. I don't get corners that I rip off. I don't kind of get weird little divots up in the front, which is what I've found that I, I used to do in the past much more frequently and that my students still sometimes do now as a combination of a little bit too much downward pressure and a little bit too parallel to the grains of the cane. You get these little, you know, these little divots that happen right in the front. So I'll go up a few passes up the channel. I'm hitting the channels and the rails, staying away from the spine and certainly staying away from this heart area. 
And then in that same quadrant, I've got two triangles in the thumbnail shape that I concern myself with. One is that 45 degree angle. One is a little bit wider 90 degree wing. And I kind of hit both of those at once in an arc, arc, arc type of scrape. Couple passes. And I'm turning just to double check and make sure that I'm getting a taper from back to front in the rails. You can kind of see, hopefully you can see with this camera, that it's more tapered on the top blade than the bottom. Do the same thing on the other side. Channel widening out to 45 degrees. Parallel out to 45. Parallel out to 45, hitting the rails and the channels. Good luck, rail's starting to taper. I got a little bit of a bump over here. I'm gonna clear that out. You can see every once in a while there's one of those little divots. I'm gonna go opposite where it's peeling. Opposite the grain, opposite the grain, until I work that out. Sometimes I'll also grab a little piece of sandpaper and just buff out the edges. That way my knife doesn't continually get caught. I find that it's super important to really make sure that once your knife catches to get that little blip that little speed bump out of there otherwise you'll just continue to keep running it over and it just gets worse and worse it's kind of like those potholes in the winters here in Iowa that they never fix you just keep hitting them over and over again and they only get deeper so now that I've done these two sides the scrape you'll see me do now is where they meet in the middle I call this the bow tie region because if you draw these wings right there is the place that we tend to miss the most just out of confidence and knife scrape it looks like a cute little bow tie and after i've done that thumbnail portion the 45 degrees 90 degrees on both sides i'll go back and do an extra pass right here just to make sure that this really is just as thin as the other parts couple blending strokes to make sure I don't have any bumps over there. Usually at this point I'm just going to do a tactile test. Run my fingers over it, make sure I don't feel any extra bumps. And hopefully we'll be able to see, you can kind of see already the shape of the spine is more defined on this side of the blade than this one, just with how the light casts over it. I don't know if it's discernible from this video but that bottom blade is considerably lighter than the top blade. At this point, I'll usually take the reed about 50% of the way to where I think it's gonna end up. So this is now twice as thick as this one, which is about twice as thick as it will eventually be in that first millimeter. So I'll do the same thing on the other side, parallel to an angle, parallel to an angle, and parallel to an angle. Pause, double check my rails. Still got a little bit more to go to match the other side. Extra swoop. That looks like I want it. I'm saying last side, fourth time's a charm, I guess. Parallel to an angle. I keep adjusting my plaque to make sure that I'm not accidentally getting too steep of a knife angle across the rail here because it's really easy to just dig in and slice off that entire rail, which is a really unfortunate series of events. Parallel to the angle, parallel to the angle. At this point, I'm starting to see something that's a little bit concerning with this back half. You can see how as I scrape more out of the channels that there's an extra little divot in here. There's sort of a, a valley and it looks like at some point either I did not cut the collar exceptionally clearly in the back, which is entirely possible, or there's a, a lighter portion of the reed right in the back. And so I want to go ahead and try to get that out of the way so that I don't have an extra portion of the reed that caves in down at the bottom. I use a file a lot of times to balance these things out. Rails balanced, that looks about like I want it. And then the same thing I did on the other side 45, 90, 45, 90 on both sides, kind of all at once. Right through the wings, through the tip, wings, tip. I'm going to do the 
this side as well. I try to be mindful of the angle of my right hand as I come through here to go ahead and proactively get some of that thump, that bow tie area in the front, but sometimes it's just not as even since on the other side you're rotating your hand the other way, you know, to access that area. So I usually end up going through with the very tip of my knife and doing that bow tie area anyway. This is the area that I find a lot of less experienced reed scrapers are hesitant to really go for and make the tip as thin as it should be right in this first millimeter around the bow tie because it's so close to the heart and we all know that we don't want to over scrape the heart because you end up with you know, a saggy tenor register and there's just kind of too much instability that we associate with having too weak of a, of a heart. So now we can start to see this spine was the first side I did. It has a little bit more prominent spi spine than the second one, as in it's a little more peaked right through there. And I actually don't like having just two or three grains wide, a really super strong spine like that. Um, I think it makes my, my sound with my instrument and my um, embouchure and everything just a little bit too brittle. So this is very light filing. I'm just gonna take the edge off that and you can see it's a little more rounded there. Doing a visual comparison of all of the rails to make sure that they taper the same amount. We're just buffing out any inconsistencies there. I'm gonna take the plaque out and take a look at the tip. I haven't really finessed how these channels transfer into the tip very much, and so the tip still pretty much is solely primary curves. And really when I'm doing this first scrape, I want to leave the reed a little bit a little bit wide, uh, I guess a little bit, a little bit flat, a little bit wild. It's going to harden up overnight, and it's always easier, I find, to kind of tone down a reed than to put life into it. So at this stage, I want it to be maybe just a little bit flat and a little bit kind of out there, sound a little bit raw, because then I can pretty easily temper it later. So I'm just going to dunk that back in water. Reassess that tip shape as I've released, let off all this cane. It's released a bunch of tension in the in the blade here and so that automatically makes the the tip pop open a little bit. I'll adjust both wires to fix that tip just because I want to keep that second wire as close to a circle as I can and see how the crow sounds different. A lot more of those low sounds. I, gra I grab those pliers out of instinct. A lot of times I have to adjust there but I don't think I need to adjust this one. I'm going to play a couple notes on this. Definitely flat, but I want to make sure first and foremost that it responds. I would be shocked if this has an exceptional high register, but we can kind of see what it does up there. saggy on that first finger E, but I'm actually going to leave a B for right now and let it harden up a little bit and then make some adjustments and, uh, you know, in another, probably later this evening, I'll give it a while to think about what it's done and sit in its little reed box, but that's generally what I'll do on the first scrape and I just let it go at this point, let it stabilize and make some adjustments as we move forward. So if this is helpful for you guys, I'll make sure to record another one, maybe with this one right here, this rainbow guy, the yellow tube and the blue wrapping at the bottom here and we can follow him from beginning to end. So thanks for watching this uh, experimental live first scrape read video and I hope it was helpful. I will see you guys next time.